So this is going to be 33-1. We're going to take a look at sum and difference identities. So today you guys are going to be able to use those sum and difference identities to evaluate with values on the unit circle, and we're going to use those same identities to evaluate values not on the unit circle. Now here are those identities. We have our cosine, sine, and tangent identities. Now let's just understanding this type of notation here. This is saying that if I'm adding two angles, so alpha plus beta, that means that I took the top row, and so that means you take the top row here. Because this, if this was a minus, that means take the bottom row, which means you take the bottom row here. And so just something to note, when the cosine, when we're adding two angles, this is going to be a negative. When we're subtracting two angles, this is going to be a positive. Likewise here, if I'm adding with sine, I'm adding here. If I'm subtracting with sine, I'm subtracting here. Adding with tangent, it's going to be a plus on top and a minus on the bottom. Subtracting a minus on top, but a plus on the bottom. Now there's nothing ultra difficult about this, and you're going to see that when we start evaluating with these, you're going to, you're going to kind of see the pattern as things go on there. So. There's nothing really strange to note about this. It's just kind of being able to visualize and understand the notation and what it's asking. These have to be memorized. Okay, if we don't understand our sum and difference identities, it's going to be a rough time. So here's our first one. Sine is 75 degrees. Now, to be completely honest, sine is 75 degrees is not on the unit circle, right? We have 30, we have 45, we have 60, and we have 90. And I know that this is between that 60 degrees and that 90 degrees, but we just don't have that 75 degrees. So the question is, can I break apart this sine of 75 degrees into values that I do know that are on the unit circle? And so in this case, I could say that the sine of 75 degrees is the sine of 45 degrees plus 30 degrees. That's on the unit circle. That's on the unit circle. Now, if you're trouble, we wondering, wait, can I do the 30 degrees and then the 45 degrees? The answer is yes. So it doesn't matter which order that you put them in. And so we have to assume now that this value is going to be alpha and this value here is going to be beta. So because it's sine, that means I need to look at the sine identity. It's plus, so I know I'm going to take the plus route, which means when I use this, it's going to be a plus here. And so I apply the identity. And so it says the sine of alpha, so the sine of alpha, the cosine of beta, cosine of beta, plus, right, we took the top route, cosine alpha, co uh, sine beta. And so right here, we applied the identity. And now if you notice, all of these values are now in the unit circle. So the sine of 45 degrees is radical 2 over 2. The cosine of 30 degrees is radical 3 over 2. The cosine of 45 degrees is radical 2 over 2. The sine of 30 degrees is 1 half. And now simplifying this, I get radical 6 over 4 plus radical 2 over 4, which just equals radical 6 plus radical 2 all over 4. And that right there is going to be my answer. So the first thing that I did is I broke apart this trig value into values as they appear in the unit circle. And so that's what I did here, because both the 30 degrees and the 45 degrees are on the unit circle. Then step two, I used the identity to evaluate. And so I used the sine identity, and it had a plus in it, so that's the one that I used. And then from there, I was able to simplify and get my answer. Next one, cosine of 15 degrees. So I need to think, how can I break this apart in the unit circle? And so this is going to equal the cosine of 45 degrees minus 30 degrees. So now I recognize, so step two, using the identity, this is alpha, this is beta, this is going to be my cosine value, and there's a minus. So the minus means I use the bottom route. So that means in my answer, there's going to be a plus there. So it's going to be cosine alpha cosine beta switches sine sine alpha sine beta and now I need to simplify 
these. And so cosine of 45 degrees is radical 2 over 2. Cosine of 30 degrees is going to be radical 3 over 2. Plus, and then the sine of 45 degrees is going to be radical 2 over 2. And the sine of 30 degrees is going to be 1 half. So I get root 6 over 4 plus root 2 over 4. And so that's going to give me root 6 plus root 2 all over 4 as my answer. Now the tangent 105 degrees. So I need to think how I need to break this apart into the different trig values. So this one is going to be, let's do the tangent of 60 degrees plus 45 degrees. And I know that equals 105. So here's my alpha and here's my beta. And so using the unit or, or using the identity, it's going to be the top rung, right? Because that's plus, so that's going to be a plus, and that's going to be a minus there. So then using my identity, I get the tangent of alpha plus the tangent of beta over 1 minus tangent alpha tangent beta. And so now I need to use the unit circle to be able to evaluate those. So remember, sine over cosine, that tangent of 60 degrees, that's root 3 over 2 over 1, half. So that's going to be root 3. So I get root 3 plus tangent of 45 degrees is 1 over 1 minus, and this is going to be tangent of 60 degrees, so root 3 times 1. So now simplifying this, I get root 3 plus 1 over 1 minus root 3. Okay, well, I have a radical in the denominator, so I need to rationalize it. So that means I have to multiply by the conjugate, because that gets rid of radicals out of the denominator there. So multiplying the top through, I get radical 3 plus 3 plus 1 plus radical 3. So that was first, outer, inner, last. And then on the bottom here, first is going to be 1, outer is positive root 3, inner is negative root 3, and then last, so minus 3. So I'm going to get 4 plus 2 root 3 all over negative 2. So if I factor out a 2 on top, this is going to give me 2 plus root 3 all over negative 2. The 2's cancel out and so I get negative 2 minus root 3. Which makes sense now because you know it's at 105 degrees so that means that it should be negative. Now let's take a look at it where the angles are not going to be on the unit circle. And so typically an example should look like this. If sine of alpha is 3 fifths and cosine of beta is 12 thirteenths, it tells you where alpha is. Like this is the quadrant. We need to think of what quadrant that's going to lie in. And it tells me what quadrant, what beta is going to lie in. It's asking me to add those two angles together. So doing that here, I know that through the identity that this is what it's going to be. The tangent of alpha plus tangent of beta over 1 minus tangent alpha tangent beta. This is what the identity said. So this is like our first thing that I need to realize. I need my identity. But now I need to know what are my values. I need to know what my tangent alpha is and what my tangent beta is to be able to plug them in. So I need to draw out my triangles. Well, this is alpha. We said it's in quadrant number one. How do I know? It's because it's between zero degrees and pi halves. If this is pi halves and this is zero degrees, I drew my triangle in between there. So now labeling this, 3 and 5, that's going to be opposite hypotenuse. And so 3, 4, 5 triangles, so that should be a 4. That means um, my tangent is going to be opposite over adjacent, so my tangent of alpha should be 3 fourths. Now my beta triangle. This is going to be between negative pi halves and 0, so that's going to be quadrant 4. Labeling it, we know that this is going to be adjacent over hypotenuse. And so now using, this is a 12-5-13 uh, a triangle or a 5-12-13 triangle. This is now going to be negative 5. Now it's negative because it's going down, right? We said our y's are negative, so it's going down. 
And so that means my tangent now is going to be uh, opposite over adjacent. So now that I know what my tangent alpha is and what my tangent beta is, I can take this information and I can plug it in. So tangent alpha we said was 3 fourths. Tangent beta we said was negative 5 twelfths. We have our 1, tangent alpha, tangent beta. Now I know this is kind of messy, right? Because now we have to do all sorts of crazy common denominator stuff. It's just what's going to have to happen. So the common denominator between everything is going to be 48. Now the reason why I chose 48 because 4 times 12 is 48. So I had to do 48 over 48, 12 over 12, 4 over 4. And you're going to see this is going to end up being really, really nice because now it's a simplified complex fraction. The 48s cancel out. And so I'm going to be left with 16 over 63. Now, if you can get to this part, that's a good thing. We can talk about this all day, but getting to this part and plugging everything in, that's kind of like the purpose of this. Let's look at another one. So if I said sine alpha is 3 fifths, cosine beta is 15 over 17, once again, alpha is going to be in quadrant 1, beta is going to be in quadrant 4. So this is going to be the identity that we're going to use. So alpha, drawing this, that's going to be opposite over hypotenuse. That's going to be 4. And so tangent's 3 fourths again. And so here, this is an 8, 15, 17 triangle. So opposite over adjacent, that's going to be negative 8 fifteenths. So remember, this is negative because negative in the y. Now plugging everything in. We said tangent alpha is 3 fourths minus, because it's from the problem. Tangent beta is negative 8 fifteenths. 1 plus 3 fourths times negative 8 over 15. The common denominator is 60, because this is going to end up being 60. So I did 60 over 60, 15 over 15, 4 over 4, and we got to this value. So now simplifying that, this gets flipped, the 60s cancel out, and so I get 77 over 36 is my answer. This concludes our lesson. If you have any other questions, please leave them in the comments.